Hey, it's Mars, and this is Let's Make a Dungeon Crawler Part 16. In this video, we'll be going over our third and final highlighting option, and that's using shaders on our camera. So let's start off by grabbing these files. We'll need these two shaders and these three scripts, and we can find them on this blog post that I stumbled upon yesterday. And here we've got some images of what games we're, try we're trying to recreate, and that's the look that we'll see in CSGO, Left 4 Dead, Diablo 3, and this is definitely what we want. So if we scroll down, there's a step-by-step -step explanation of how it works and how it was made. And coolest of all, at the very bottom, there is a Unity package w which we can import straight into our game, which is how we're going to get these shaders and scripts. So a big shout out to Victor Opatine. Thank you so much for supplying us with these so that we could use these in our game. I'll also be putting my own copy with slight adjustments of the highlights effects script in a link in the description. So download Victor's package here from his blog, and then you can download my copy of highlights effects, which just makes a few changes once again, and then use that as opposed to the one in the package. So let's go to our main camera and I will drop the highlights effect script onto my camera and you'll see it comes with a blur optimize. I'll disable that. Also note that this doesn't play very well with anti-aliasing image effects. So let's go over to our game view and I'm going to hit play just so that my zombie can walk up to me and I'm going to pause the game with control shift P. Now that we're in the game view we'll be able to see what the zombie looks like when I mouse over top of him. So our camera has our highlights effects script we just dropped on, and it has an object renderer. So I'll grab the zombies child game object, which is the one that has the skinned mesh renderer component, and I'll drag that into the object renderer slot. Now we can see how it's going to look. So choose a color that suits you. I'll use something like this. And then you can also tweak the blur optimize settings. Even though the checkbox is unchecked, it does use this blur for the outline. So I'll go with something like that. And the color looks good right about here. So this is what we'll get when we mouse over our zombie. Looks pretty good. Also, if I was to hit play right now to stop the game, I would lose any changes I've made. So I'm going to click on my color and click this box down here so that it gets it saves the color. And then I'll also right click on my blur optimized and copy component. And then when I stop playing, I can right click and paste component values. That gives me the settings that I chose earlier while I was in play mode. So now I'll click on my color, go back to the color I saved, and everything's good to go. Now all we need to do is, just like in the first episode, we changed the mouse cursor. The second episode for this little part of the series, we changed the material. Now we're going to change what is in the object renderer slot on mouse enter. So let's do the sword. And in the sword's ply blocks on mouse enter, I'll get rid of the material blocks I put in. So we will do a common set property and I'll go to my camera and drag in the highlights effects component into the first null box. We will browse for a value to change, and that will be object renderer, renderer. And on the long sword, I'll drag in the object, the mesh renderer component into the last null box. So now on mouse enter, the renderer in my component will be set to the long sword mesh renderer. Perfect. And then on mouse exit, I'm going to set it to a common component. That's just a blank component. So that should give us a nice null there. 
And also, you'll see that I dragged the main camera straight from my hierarchy into the ply blocks. Unfortunately, this is a sword prefab ply blocks, which means the sword typically wouldn't be in the scene when you hit play, so we'll need to find it. For now, we'll just go to Object, and we will need to get the component, Highlights Effects, Get Component, Highlights Effects, from, let's find by name, Main Camera, and let's put that in the on mouse exit. Set object renderer on highlights effects on main camera. So let's hit play and see how this looks. All right. Our highlighting is working, but Let's choose a new color as well. So on mouse enter, we could also do, I'll copy this block. Now you'll see I don't have a drop down anymore, and that's because I'm not referencing the object from the hierarchy. I'm just using blocks that will find it. So temporarily, I'll drop it right back in there. Let's actually navigate to the camera's highlights effects component. And now we have a drop down again, and this time I want to change highlight color color. Now that we have the correct value, we don't need to reference the camera from the hierarchy anymore, so I'll copy this down. And then in this last null field, we want the color. So let's go to common. color, and we'll use a green color for this sword, and we'll see how that looks. A bit bright. So here, once again, we can pause with control shift P. Get off the sword. We can pause with control shift P. Go to our game view so we'll see how it looks. And our main camera's object renderer, we can drop the sword in there. And let's check for a better color. That looks perfect right there. So here we can, once again, save it as a preset color. And then in our sword supply blocks, we'll set the color to our preset color. Now let's go to our enemy. So I'm going to put these supply blocks into a bracketed comment block. All right, so let's put these, I made a bracketed comment block, and I'll put these inside, and I'm going to copy these from the sword to my enemy's ply blocks, and on mouse enter, we've got our set renderer to, and instead of the zombie, I'm going to do the game object that has the mesh renderer on it. And then for our color, I'll use a color that I saved in the color presets. And then I'll copy this block to on mouse exit. We'll set the renderer to a common component. Now right now, my ply blocks for the zombie have gotten really laggy. And there's one really easy way to fix it. We can simply grab the zombie prefab and go to game object, 
break prefab instance, and that frees up your lag. I'll drop component in here, and then once again, if you if you start experiencing lag, and that's might be because you have so many events in the ply blocks of a prefab, and you go to game object break prefab instance so that you can work without any sort of lag. Just make sure that once you're done, you go ahead and hit the apply button in your inspector to turn the game object back into the prefab. So now, the zombie should be set up. And last but not least, let's do our door. I'll copy the outline blocks. And I will grab my door, open the door's apply blocks, and on mouse enter, I'll paste in. And I'll get rid of these materials that we did in the last video. And here, let's do set the renderer to the doors mesh renderer component. And the color to, and I'll set this color during play mode so I can see it better. And then I'll change it. Also, let's make sure that when we set the object renderer, it's to the renderer, not the game object. I think I messed that up on the zombie. Let's check. In the zombie's ply blocks, on mouse enter, the renderer. Sure enough, I dragged in the game object, but we want to grab the zombie's mesh renderer component. Perfect. Now let's hit play. Zombies working perfectly, swords working perfectly, and then I'll go over to the door, mouse over the door, and hold Control Shift P to pause the game. Go back to our game view, and let's grab our camera and find a nice color for the door. So here we've set our renderer to the door, our highlight to our color. And once again, on mouse exit, we'll set the renderer to a common component. Let's hit play and see how everything looks. Zombie looks great. Sword looks great. Door looks great. So that's all for this one, and those were your three choices that I wanted to share with you. The cursor change, the material change, and the camera shader change. Once again, a shout out to Victor for his amazing camera shaders that we picked up off of his blog. And also check out the game he's working on. It looks really cool, and show him some support for supporting us. If you learned something, hit that like button and join me next time where we'll be going over enemy diversity.